Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and in this week's episode, sponsored by Mauser Electronics, we're asking the question, how safe are electric vehicles? So we're going to do a deep dive into the safety systems on a vehicle like this. Let's get into it. Now, it's fair to say that safety systems on vehicles have come on a long way since this beautiful 1950s Porsche 356 here. In fact, I think the only safety systems on this is probably going to be the fact it's got a bumper and possibly a collapsible steering column. That's about it. Um, NCAP, for instance, didn't start crash testing vehicles until about 1997, which is really recent. So if you even though that electric vehicles, uh, when they go through those NCAP tests, are some of the safe safest cars out there, we're going to be concentrating on the systems within them, not actually the safety of the crash testing aspect of cars today. So in today's video specifically, we're going to be looking at the safety systems that are associated with the electric vehicle powertrain and things like this battery pack that I've got in front of me here now. Now I'm going to keep this fairly simple. I'm going to split it into two sections. One is what is managing the battery packs and secondly, what happens in a fault condition where things go a little bit pear-shaped. So just to cover that off, what is a battery pack? Well, you've got the battery modules here and they kind of sit in what's called a battery pack. But what's inside the magic black boxes? Well, click on the link above because we've covered that in a previous episode. But in short, they'll look something like this. So you'll have the battery modules and then inside that box there, you'll have things like coolant plates, BMSs, contactors, fuses and other bits and pieces. So in this shot here, there's two really important elements to keeping on top of a battery and that is the battery management system and the coolant system. So let's cover off this first. This is the BMS, battery management system. What this is doing is monitoring the cell voltages through these wires here. So all the individual cells that are within these modules and battery modules make up, makes up a pack. It's ensuring that they are between the voltages that you really want. And in this pack, it's probably going to be somewhere around about 3.3 volts up to about 4.2 volts. So that's what's monitoring the individual cell voltages. And then you've got wires coming off here, which is monitoring the temperatures. So there's uh, temperature sensors within the actual battery modules themselves. And it's ensuring they're pretty much like a human, if you like. A battery is happy if it's above, say, zero degrees Celsius and below around about 40 degrees Celsius. So the battery management system is monitoring the voltage and the temperature of the battery modules here. And what you can also see in between the battery modules are these coolant plates. Now, the coolant plates are essentially doing, I call them coolant plates, but equally you could be heating up the battery as well. But what you've got is you've got coolant going through this sandwich plate here that is just thermally managing the batteries and ensuring they are within that Goldilocks zone of zero to about 40 degrees Celsius. So as well as the battery coolant plate that's sandwiched in between the battery modules, the battery management system is also managing the flow rate of the actual pump um, bringing on the heater. Sometimes you'll need to heat the batteries up to bring them up to temperature on colder days, certainly like today, hence the woolly hat. And things like the radiator and fan system, whether or not it's going to bring the fans on because the temperature is getting a little bit too high. Now, no electrical system is going to be complete without fuses. And because Mouse Electronics has the wider selection of semiconductors and electronics components, they are our go-to one-stop shop, if you like, for everything related to fuses. They have great brands like Little Fuse, Eaton, and uh, what's this? This is Phoenix Contact for a cartridge fuse, for instance. So as well as the fuses, fuses uh, need fuse holders, and they have a great selection of fuse holders as well, like this and this cartridge fuse holder here. Now, everybody that's out there in car world will recognize a blade fuse. Now this blade fuse is 20 amps. As soon as you get higher than 20 amps, that little bit of a wire inside the window will blow and break the circuit. Now, 12 volts doesn't really cut it in electric vehicle land because now we're up to 400 volts or higher. And these ceramic fuses here work at higher voltages, higher amps, and they also are rated by speed as well. For instance, this 
500 amp fuse here that might not blow as soon as it hit, hits 500 amps. Depending on speed rating, it might go above 500 amps for a few seconds before it then blows. So these fuses here, we all get from Maus Electronics and any fuse requirements you have out there for electric vehicles, I suggest you go and check those guys out. Now, before we leave the exciting world of fuses, I want to discuss the difference between this and that, because both of these are out of a Tesla, but this is the older type fuse that was in a, a Tesla, the main fuse, and that's a traditional ceramic-based fuse. But this is a pyro fuse. Now, why do electric vehicles use pyro fuses? Well, in short, see what I said there? In short, if this... Uh, blue, it would primarily be because the amps has gone too high. But what happens if you're in an accident and the main high voltage system needs to be isolated because it's been in an accident, but this didn't blow because the amps didn't go so high? That's where a pyro fuse comes in. So this has a pyro charge in here, and when it blows, it blows out the conductor inside there, and the circuit is broken. And that means that that pyro charge there can be triggered, if you like, by an external signal, such as an inertia switch. Now this is in most, if not all, electric vehicles, and when there's an accident, this will trigger, because it can sense it, and it will blow the pyro fuse, hence isolating the high voltage system in the vehicle. Now, another important safety element in any electric vehicle is the safety disconnect, or service disconnect, as it's sometimes called. So, if you pull this out, there we go, that would now disconnect the high voltage system. So in there is just a, a loop, if you like, of conductor. And as soon as that's pulled out now, the high voltage system will essentially be dead. So you'll normally find these on the battery pack somewhere on any electric vehicle. Ours is probably one of these two here. And the other thing I want to show you as well at the same time is these two little wires coming out here. So this, these two silver contact points here are for the high voltage system but this is what's called a H-fill. Now this is a little safety system that is on all of the high voltage plugs here. That means that if any of these are disconnected or if any of the cables get cut this little system here which is just a loop of a low voltage circuit that goes around the whole of the vehicle if that is cut in any way then the high voltage system also shuts down now i don't know why but tim always has a funny glint in his eyes whenever i put these on and uh, he's got a uh, cheeky grin at the moment so what i'm going to talk about now is once you've got all your lovely electrons in your battery boxes you don't want them leaking out now do you so another feature that the building management systems have is what's called isolation monitoring because Unlike a 12 volt battery, where the negative is permanently connected to the chassis of the car, and this is the 12 volt that goes around all the wires, a high voltage battery is completely isolated from the car. You don't want either the positive or the negative anywhere on the vehicle touching the chassis. But if it does, the isolation monitoring feature of the building management system will trigger and shut the car off safely. So to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I've got two batteries here. One good one, these are out of a VW ID module, uh, uh, ID car by the way. I've got one good one and one bad one, which is why it's wrapped in insulative tape. And I'll show you why right now. So, and why I've got the gloves on. Right, so this battery here is measuring 28 volts at the moment. However, that's uh, obviously um, across the pos and neg. And if I go to the chassis of the battery and to the positive terminal, we're actually still measuring 21 volts. So that means quite a lot of the voltage inside this battery is leaking to the chassis of the battery. And if that battery is attached to the chassis of the car via the battery box, which it would be, then that high voltage is going to be leaking to the actual chassis of the car, which is no good thing. And just to demonstrate, I'm not making it up, if I measure this one here to the chassis of the battery, we're getting basically zero, which is how it should be. 
Now, the last line of defence, if you like, as far as the safety systems on electric vehicle is concerned, is this thing down here. It's a PRV, or pressure release valve. So if everything goes completely pear-shaped and the batteries inside here have gone into thermal runaway, which is a very, very rare occurrence, then the pressure inside here will build. That pressure release valve will blow and any gases will get vented out of there. So every battery pack you'll see, like this one, and this Ferrari one over here will have a pressure release valve. And obviously you don't want that getting vented to inside the passenger cell. So that'll get vented externally. So there we go. That's a lot of safety systems on modern electric vehicles. Everything from the management of the safety systems, the battery management system, the thermal management uh, system, keeping the temperatures and the voltages of the cells uh, where they need to be right the way up to fault condition type safety systems like fuses, uh, pressure release valves, and just notice at the back there you've got the uh, inertia switch there, so if it is in an accident, that will trigger and close everything off. And next to that, something I haven't even mentioned, which is a buzzer, because obviously if you've left the vehicle in drive, and because electric vehicles are so quiet, you might forget oh, to leave it in drive, there's a little buzzer there that sounds as well if a door opens and you've got it in drive. So lots of safety systems on electric vehicles. And because we build our vehicles to what's called ECE R100 regulations, we put most of those safety critical systems onto our conversions here at Electric Classic Cars as well. So there we go. Uh, thanks to Mauser Electronics for sponsoring this episode and any of your electronics components needs, don't forget to go to mauser.com. We'll put the link in the description there. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.